Welcome back to Fast Market. I'm Alex Coffey alongside Tom White filling in for our regular co-host Kevin Hanks. It's now time for our cash tag segment. Tom joining us from likefoil.com is the co-founder Andy Swan and our very own TD, Net, TD Ameritrade Network contributor Jenny Horn is with us as well. Jenny, we're talking DocuSign. This has been uh, a really cool technology to, to actually have affect us as consumers, but what does that mean uh, for investors going forward here? Because uh, it's had a nice run as well. It has, and right now it sits at about $20 off of its all-time highs, but it is still up about 16% year to date, and I think DocuSign is actually a cooler company than maybe we give it credit for. It sort of operates in this neat which is e-signatures and actually over the last year it's filled a very significant need while so many people were remote as well as those actually in offices it sort of offers the ability to cut down on redundancies and costs and time with really that would be a more traditional process you know the days of signing a lease with pen and paper are perhaps gone or quickly going away now another thing is this is sort of a pain point for many organizations but with this sort of streamlined cloud-based software it is being utilized by again not only those working remotely but also those in offices and there is the argument that this is sort of the new normal with this heavy remote workforce expected to continue in the foreseeable future so that gives DocuSign sort of an edge and you can see that actually reflected in their sales they're expecting to grow about 40 percent this fiscal year and this follows last quarter actually growing about 60 percent in the quarter alone plus you all just sort of talked about this addressable market with Netflix DocuSign actually sees the addressable market for their e-signatures at about $25 billion. And in fiscal 21, their, their revenue was about $1.5 billion. So you can make the argument that there is actually a ton of room for this company to grow. Plus, we were seeing also gross margins remaining pretty strong at about 80% last quarter. And operating margins are also rising pretty nicely at about 20% last quarter, which was up from 8% last year. Now, the one thing is from a trading perspective, it does trade at a pretty high multiple at about 28 times next year's earnings. But some would say, given all of the stats I just sort of listed, this is actually justified given their levels of growth. And our first tweeter today was sort of talking in the mul multiple tweets about DocuSign's expectations ahead of this report and some of these you know, different mixed feelings, but all involving DocuSign's second quarter earnings. So our first tweeter today says, the company obviously trades at a premium valuation, especially if you are not optimistic about CLM and the agreement cloud as a whole. Seeing how the market is reacting to earnings, we might get a sell-off if there is not a blowout quarter, which we know we have seen from several of these other tech names, Zoom particularly. But to sort of explain what CLM is, I actually thought it was really cool. It's a software that utilizes AI to sort of automate, automate manual tasks and also align workflows, meaning you can streamline software. So say you could be using DocuSign while still on Salesforce. So that to me is extremely cool because then you don't have to have multiple applications being utilized, which obviously gives DocuSign and Salesforce, any of its tech peers, this edge. But our next speaker today talks about Zoom and sort of makes this comparison as we saw Zoom have one of its worst day ever following its results. So our next speaker today says, Zoom video earnings seem to be affecting DocuSign today. DocuSign is not a pandemic stay at home play. DocuSign is the way of the future. Nobody wants to use or to keep paper anymore when you can store it in the cloud. Now, I completely echo that sentiment. I don't think I even own paper at my apartment. I think it seems sort of redundant to, to you know, be using pen and paper in today's world. But Andy, I'm very curious to see what your data says because typically your data sort of reflects the stay at home and going back to the work trends very well. So I'm curious if this tweeter is correct. Yeah, I really like that last tweet. I think he nailed it. Um, you know, when we think about DocuSign, it's a little different than what we were talking about with Zoom. If you remember before Zoom's earnings, we were on here uh, talking about how there was a lot of slack in the line because of pull forward demand and the return to workspaces and just general uh, fatigue with all of the COVID uh, work from home type of stuff was setting in. Well, DocuSign's different in that um, you know, the, the pandemic definitely accelerated adoption of its technology, but it's a technology that's here to stay that people like no matter where they're working from or how they're working. So it, just like the last uh, tweet, Jenny, that you shared uh, said, you know, this is not something that is that requires a work from home environment to be effective. Uh, and so I think 
with DocuSign, what we like to look at really is how happy are consumers with this new technology. Anytime we see a big consumer macro trend driving people towards a technology, one of the things we like to look at really key is you know how how happy are they with that solution? And for DocuSign, it's very very high. You know, um, we're at um, I think it's 74% positive uh, for this solution, which is very high in the software space, especially when you're talking about um, applications that do one thing really specifically. And when you compare it to its peer, Adobe, uh, you know, it's just a it's just a runaway uh, success and a dominant um, trend. So we think that DocuSign will have pricing power going forward, will have low churn rates, and uh, looks to be good uh, long term. Now going into earnings. We've seen over and over again, Peloton, Zoom, Chewy, Five Below, the risk is to the downside on all of these uh, pull forward demand names. I don't think DocuSign is any exception to that, but from a longer term perspective, really love the way this company is setting itself up. And Andy, if you look at, uh, you know, your data has been pretty consistently grinding higher there for DocuSign, uh, but we see peaks and valleys in some of the other names that you just mentioned, Zoom, uh, Peloton, uh, where they're more cyclical or maybe they ramped up due to the pandemic and they're not sustainable, right, uh, as far as happiness goes. But with DocuSign, once you use it, you never want to go back. I just closed on a house and we didn't use DocuSign and I was about to, you know, chop my head off. It was so painful. But at the same time, is this what your data is showing and reflective of that this ramped up the speed that DocuSign uh, became, uh, you know, uh, a, a necessary tool, but your happiness backs it up, and that will probably continue uh, to favor this company moving forward as it's only uh, basically, uh, you know, a tip of the iceberg as far as the addressable market goes. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that what we're also seeing is it's just very different from Zoom in terms of just the qualitative analysis of the way consumers talk about this. You know, now people are talking about they can't wait to be done with Zoom meetings. They can't wait till the era of the Zoom meeting is over. And that is not what people are saying about DocuSign. Like you're talking about, this is a new way of doing business that pretty much everybody involved, except for legacy players, really like. And so we think that there's a lot of growth potential for DocuSign. The way that they're making their con consumers happy uh, shows us that uh, they've got long-term retention in mind and are ex executing very well. So Andy, I guess my one concern with DocuSign, because I've used it like Tom, and like I am one of these happy consumers, it is so easy to sign a lease. It's like gone are the days of going to a leasing office, which seems so ridiculous now. But is this a potentially an M&A target for a company like a Salesforce, who's like the M&A king, or you know, say a Zoom or some of these other massive companies? Because I know you compared them to say Adobe, but Adobe is such a massive company compared to DocuSign. Yeah, absolutely. I think. I think DocuSign is definitely an acquisition target. It's kind of it kind of reminds me of Mailchimp or Mailgun or some of the SendGrid, some of the email uh, marketing providers that did one thing really really well, and eventually a Salesforce or a Twilio, those types of companies, end up acquiring and adding them to their suite of products uh, to to match what Adobe has. And so I do think that that's a re that's a real possibility. Um, you know, but the stock is a little rich right now, like you pointed out earlier. So it's a it's a tough uh, it's a tough bite to take off. Um, but we'll have to see. I do think that it could fit into a lot of companies' uh, suite of products relatively well. And again, this consumer happiness being so much higher than competitor Adobe's similar products uh, would make it an even more valuable target. Andy, hear me out here, because this is going to sound a little bit out there in terms of this comparison, but. Is a possible comparison for what it is in this space Roku? Because this sounds like a very, very replicable technology, but they have the brand name kind of first to market and apparently a very happy user experience versus some of the legacy players. Then it might just be easier for Salesforce to say, hey, we're using DocuSign, people know how to use it, there's not going to be questions, than developing their own. And that's sort of what we've seen with Roku. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, what Roku does is, you know, significantly more difficult than what DocuSign does, I think, from a technology uh, perspective and, you know, getting all of the media onto their platform and all that distribution agreements that they have to do. But I, I think you're right. It's it's kind of one of those, why reinvent something? There's so much that could go wrong. 
when you've got a proven product out there that nails the consumer experience so well. And so I, I do think um, that your analogy is a little bit of a stretch, but it kind of uh, makes sense when you look at it through that lens. Cool. Thanks for the insight as always, Mr. Swan. Uh, looking forward to this DocuSign report. I know you guys don't uh, comprehensively cover this one, so you don't have an earnings score for us, but it sounds like you're optimistic for it long term. But you acknowledge kind of the, the COVID pull forward demand risks around these earnings. And we've gone kind of three for three for the downside so far. So why, uh, I guess, expect an exception here with DocuSign? But thanks as always for joining us. Thanks to Jenny Horn as well. And now, Tom, you have the, uh, the fun task of, <laughs> of kind of putting it all together here and talk to us about uh, how you approach trading this name. 